process. Okay, uh, it, this is a good video. And uh, I also say that um, this slide explains what's the difference between digital analog and RF circuits. Uh, it would be good, right? Because uh, you have taken so many classes. So digital circuit is what? We usually just think about zero and one, right? Uh, but digital circuit is uh, more profound than that. Um, we abstract everything to zero and one that help us to do a large scale or a logic synthesis, right? So we do land gate, nor gate. But if you go to a more fundamental thing like how, what is the quality of your gate, of your transistor, of your inverter, how fast is response? Actually, we need to solve a very complicated nonlinear equation because your MOSFET is nonlinear to find out what is the output voltage, input voltage uh, for a given input voltage, right? So like in EE224, we study this. You find that, well, it is digital, but turn out that it's complicated because we need to go to transistor level to find out what are the uh, noise uh, immunity, right? And a noise margin, all this thing, right? But uh, at, at the beginning, when we did digital, we just start with some zero and one. So it can be very simple, but also can be very complicated, right? So for analog circuit, on the other hand, uh, compared to digital circuit in this sense is easier because analog circuits, we assume that we have a small signal. So small signals means it's just like Taylor expansion, right? We would talk about this more, right? Although the MOSFET circuit is very complicated, for example, we know that the I equals to W on L mu C OS divided by 2 VGS minus VT, for example, right? The saturation uh, voltage, right? If I change the VG, I actually have a very complicated relationship, like in this case, a quadratic relationship with the occurrence, right? But what we do in the most, in the analog circuit is that we linearize the circuit. We say our input is small. We will oscillate about a biasing point. And that's why we have this concept such as the GM, which is the change of the current with respect to the change of the gate voltage. We'll discuss this. But the main point is we only assume we have a small input, so we do a Taylor expansion about that point. So the whole transistor, which is supposed to be very complicated, now becomes a linearized circuit, right? Although this looks in terms of drawing, more complicated than the transistor symbol, but these are all linear components, a resistor, GM, uh, voltage controls a uh, current source, right? G the current just depends proportional to the VG, right? We'll discuss this, this is just an overview. And because this, we can linearize circuit, we can use superposition. If I have two excitation, I apply a voltage at the drain, a voltage at the gate, I can solve them separately and then just add them together. In this case, you cannot do that if it is large signal, right? So that is analog. And what is RF, right? RF, of course, usually talk about high frequency, but more importantly, very often we use a large signal. We need to, uh, in order to maximize the efficiency, um, we will large, use large signal. So you're actually driving this transistor out of the linear, I mean, not linear regime, out of the uh, small signal regime, right? So you actually have a very large driving uh, amplitude. So as a result, it will cause nonlinearity. So the math will be complicated. However, we will then analyze it in the frequency domain, right? We can look at different components and how they do it and look at distortion. Right, so that is the difference between these classes that you are taking. Okay, not a very comprehensive uh, discussion, but I hope you know what you are doing in this class. So in this class, as I said, now later you will find that we we bias the circuit and then we will apply small signal. You bias it the gate at one volt, I apply a gate signal of one mini volt about the one volt, oscillating and we linear, linearize the circuit, and then we know what the gain is, uh, what is the output current, etc. 